I was positive there had been an explosion in the basement. Or was I? <laughs> the faint image of a woman running through the lobby was confusing, to say the least, but it just gave me more of a reason to go down there. I didn't have the proper key to access it through the elevator. And this was a real New York, old-fashioned basement, so it wasn't like there were windows I could crack open from the outside. But I had to get down there. Dangerous or not, there was something pulling me there, like a rope of energy tied around my waist. So I circled back around, and I found nothing, leaving me standing by the elevators where I saw the woman running from. Or was it the stairwell? I'd have to be careful because the stairwells had fire doors, so once you went in, the doors would lock. The only exit would be the fire exit, which would then set off the alarm. And so that meant that the basement door should be impossible to get through from the stairwell. But I just had to check. <laughs> so I, I took a pencil out of my pocket and I broke it with my teeth, jamming the short little pieces into the hole where, where the automatic lock goes. And after a few tests from the outside, it seemed like it would hold. So I went into the stairwell and began to descend into the darkness. With every step closer, the noises got more and more defined. And it became clear to me that the murmuring and the shouting was actually screaming. With the high ceilings of the factory, the basement was easily 20 feet underground. And being mid-March, it should have been a frigid 45 degrees down there. But at the bottom of the stairs, where I came face to face with the big iron door, it was hotter than hell. I mean hot, like midsummer Texas hot. Maybe there really was an explosion. I neared the basement door, touching it quickly with the back of my hand. Ice cold. How? Flicks of light came through the crack of the door. Just my luck. It had been left slightly open. Like someone knew I was coming, like someone wanted me to see. And so I eased the door open, slowly, so as to protect myself from whatever was on the opposing side, preparing myself to see whatever was going on down there. And I closed my eyes for just a second as the door groaned open, revealing the giant city block of a basement. And I remember it was like, as if the sound of the door soaked up all of the screaming and the shouting, all of the clanging and banging and all of the heat. In that brief second, as my eyes were closed and the door clunked against the stairwell wall, it all evaporated. It was freezing. I remember shivering and I remember seeing for a second that in the dust on the floor that shook loose against the ground, rushing footsteps coming out of the basement and up the stairs. Another mirage? This gave me an idea. Without thinking twice, I gave a small kick to the filthy floor, the way a child would kick a, a small rock on the sidewalk. And the dust flicked up into this micro cloud, and as it settled, I could see feet rushing back and forth for just a second. So I kicked again, this time a little bit harder. And the cloud of dust brewed under the sole of my shoe and then burst out in all directions. And feet rushing again, brief flashes of legs passing by and, and, and sparks. I kicked again, just as a woman fell to the ground at my feet, reaching up to me for help and then disappearing into the darkness. I had to see more. So I dropped down to my knees, pulling up dirt and dust into this big pile, as big a pile as I can make. And standing back up again, I flung it into the air. And the room came alive, as if I had ripped open a moment in time. The machines were there, spouting fire, clanging and crackling, trying desperately to continue working despite their obvious malfunction. It was hot. I began to sweat. Women and men were rushing every which way, injured, bleeding, screaming. One woman came running straight towards me. 
She was holding onto her left arm, which was mostly ripped off of her body, dangling on by a thread. And, and she stumbled and then began to fall. And I reached out my arms to catch her, and, and she fell straight through my arms, leaving nothing but ash and burning embers on my sleeves. There was nothing I could do but sit and watch this terrible event unfold. Spitting fire igniting women's clothes. Bullets exploding off the conveyor belt and sending shrapnel into the crowd of defenseless workers. And as the dust settled, and the scene faded away, and the heat subsided and turned back into cold. As the yellow light from the fire faded into the green fluorescence of the overhead, I fell to my knees, devastated. And as my head sunk to my chest, I noticed one thing that wasn't faded. The burn marks on my sleeves from where I tried to catch the woman. <laughs>